<laughs> All right, so here's the thing. Today, um, in my email, I found a PDF, the finished PDF for my very first comic book, which will be coming out with Dynamite, uh, the Swords of Sorrow series with Gail Simone. So if at any point you see me suddenly jump up and lunge toward the back of the room, it means she's into the room and I'm climbing on her head and hugging her. <laughs> she's coming, actually. Yes. She's oh, <laughs> her time between two careers of family and brunch. <laughs> <laughs> her writing can be found in Exo Jane, Salon, NPR's Code Switch, Guardian, and a host of other places willing to let her rant, most recently the Washington Post. Congratulations. She commits occasional acts of fiction, largely focusing on black people in every situation under the sun, and under a few undefined celestial bodies. And she just mentioned her first comic book project, which feel free to. <laughs> Mickey, you know you want a turk, so. <laughs> also, I'm a little silly. You might pick that up. Yes. Last but certainly not least, we have Carlin Meyer. Carlin is. Woo! Carlin is an attorney who spends her free time playing, discussing, and designing video games. She studied intellectual property and the law's application to gender, sex, and sexuality, receiving national publication for a scholarship regarding video games and copyright law. She is on the board of the Chicago Nerd Social Club and loves to volunteer at gaming festivals and gives talks on diversity in geek spaces. So, this is my awesome panel, y'all. obvious question, what brought you into the geek verse? What was it about the verse that made you think, hey, this could be a place where I belong as an adult? Oh, um, <laughs> so I'm going to put it to you this way. My nickname in grammar school is Books. I have been a geek as long as anyone can remember, including the, the, the family members who would catch me watching Doctor Who on PBS in the wee hours when I was born. <laughs> For me, it was the original Star Trek. Um, and one of the first movies I got taken to as a child was the original Star Trek in the theater, and seeing Aurora at, at the com was, was my gateway, and then books, and then video games, and I kind of never looked back after that. For me, the first black woman nerd that I knew was my mother. Um, and she introduced me to Star Trek, and the first movie that we saw was Wrath of Khan. And, <laughs> and so I just grew up in that environment, so, yeah. So for me, um, we didn't have uh, video game consoles when I was growing up, but we did have an old computer, and uh, we had floppy disks that uh, <laughs> had what I now recognize to be total knockoff copyright infringement, like Bonky Bong instead of Donkey Bong. <laughs> <laughs> like, these are games, these are great. So eventually I grew up and discovered that there are like actual, real, legitimate games and other people are playing them, you can talk to them about it, and it's, uh, it's really excellent. Great. So okay if I share mine? Yeah, please. So I'm about seven years old, right? And I'm watching Spider-Man and his amazing friends, oh and it's, yes. <laughs> yes, I regret nothing. <laughs> So what had happened, it happened to be the episode where um, Firestar and Ice Storm, I believe. Ice, 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 Ice Man. What, Ice Man. What kind of geek are you? <laughs> there will be no shaming. <laughs> but they had gone back to a class reunion to uh, Professor Xavier School for Gifted Children, and that's when I first saw Storm. So here I happen to actually see the first black woman who isn't a Jezebel, or a Manny, or a Sapphire. She's beautiful, she's powerful, she's intelligent, and I kind of look like her. That was the first time that 
you know, like when you saw Uhura, when we all saw Uhura, oh my God, there's some place for me in the future. There's some place for me in comics. There's some place for me in books. And, you know, so that was my gateway. And I, of course, when you're seven and you were as silly and sensitive as I am, seeing that after years of Superman and Batman and all of these over-muscled, very two-dimensional white guys, seeing Aurora Monroe actually brought tears to my eyes. So that was my gateway. And speaking of, since all of us have mentioned us being nerds for a very long time, let's talk a little bit about this controversy, thinking that we just got here and we just stole a bunch of white boy shit. From what I can tell, we've always been here. Am I right? Well, so let me just say, um, the reason I don't have a first thing is because I grew up with comics, I grew up with nerds, I, like, I'm, I'm one of very few girls surrounded by a batch of boys and a batch of nerdy people, so it was never a, it was never a question for me. I always knew about Storm, I always knew about all these things. And my grandmother read Sherlock Holmes books, like it was, there was never a point in my life where these things weren't right there for me. So it's very peculiar to me to have people say things. I had a conversation, as a matter of fact, at a friend's party where someone said, well, women don't, don't really do comics like, like men do. And he's having this moment, and I'm thinking about the comic I just turned in, and there was perhaps the smuggest of smug, like, I just, I just wrote one. <laughs> these are still here. <laughs> one of the things that, in like Nikki, I feel like that was my experience as well. Um, I grew up in an environment, first of all, I grew up in an all black environment. So I, I did not even, like when I went to college was really the first time that I was out of an all black neighborhood. So all the geeks I knew were black. We all talked Star Wars, we all talked Star Trek, we all talked Robotech. That was my thing, that was my jam. Woohoo, yeah, Robotech! <laughs> So like that was my world, and like comics was something that we. And I was just talking about this with a, with a friend the other day. It was like the community comic that some kid in the neighborhood had a comic and passed that comic around. Like, and the currency was now you finally got somebody to talk with about this comic because you. Know, in there was a point, if you can believe it, that being a geek was not cool. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> that being a geek was something that you weren't like, ooh, let me fight to get into this. You were like the, the $1, $2 bin of social status. So it was not something that you were trying to fight to be a part of. It was something you tried to hide. <laughs> so that's how I grew up. It was not something where it's like, ooh, let's fight to be in this culture. It was like, ooh, let me get give you this X-Men comic underneath the desk so somebody doesn't like kick our ass later up when we come home from school. And that's kind of what I grew up in. So for me, it's there was never a question about being let into this culture because it wasn't necessarily something that was a badge of honor. It was this thing that you you know we were always outcasts. So I it's this conversation about kind of being let into a culture that was a culture of outcasts, and especially for me being in an all black environment, in, in a culture of outcasts, it's just. It's a different perspective that for me, I feel like maybe it's generational. Um, I don't know. How old are you? I'm 38. I'm 38. Wait, where did where, where you grow up? What neighborhood? Uh, um, this is important. <laughs> <laughs> Roseland. Ah, okay. So I grew up in Hyde Park and Washington Park. Okay. So for me, there were a lot of geeks, but we were also basically nerdy kids. Okay, so yeah. And we Roseland. Was, there was a whole crew back There were a lot of stealth geeks in Roseland. Mm. Stealth geeks. Yeah. <laughs> you were a geek, but you weren't necessarily gonna like broadcast it. Oh no, you were a geek. You were just a geek who could fight. <laughs> so I have to ask, Tanya and Carlin, are your situations similar to Mickey's and Kitra's or um so for me I I'm I was around a lot of black geeks, but for me playing D and D like you know, first edition red box, I was usually <laughs> that the only woman around. So that was more, that was the weird thing for me, not so much, oh, there's other black folks who are geeky. Because again, I you know, Star Trek, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, that was nothing new. You know, like my mom is a reader, and she is the person who took me to see all these movies. So that wasn't the strange part. The strange part was I'm the only chick here with her little rule book and her bag of dice. <laughs> so that was that was the 
outcast part, but I was always a weird kid. I'm a weird adult. <laughs> I mean, Mickey knows that I'm a weird adult. <laughs> she so. really is. Yeah, and then for me, it, it's, it's super white environments growing up. You know, um, I was a military kid, so up to a certain point until my dad retired from the military, it was very much everybody looks different from everyone else. You know, there's no identity crisis. It's just, you know, we're all something. Everyone's mom speaks a different language. We're all living overseas. It was just like this beautiful rainbow coalition. And then later, when I, my dad retired, I moved to just this super white area of Texas. And so I was the only woman. I was the only person of color. And, you know, I'd be playing Goldeneye with all my friends who were white dudes. And it was just like, I guess that's who plays video games, them and me. So, like, I knew that I was in it, but I didn't see anyone else that looked like me. And um, it's interesting because I'm hearing kind of like this, this trend of like, my mom was into X. Because, um, you know, I had two black parents that were huge Trekkies, but at, at the time it was like, oh, they're into that. It's a parent thing, so it's not interesting to me, you know? It's like, yeah, they're watching their show. And like, I knew my mom read these books that I didn't want to read. And looking back, it's like, she was reading Ray Bradbury and Asimov. It's like, she was like this huge black nerd. And I'm like, like, where did this come from? You know, it's always been there. Wait, I have a question. I keep hearing track. Am I the only one that was here for Orlando Parisian and yeah. Star Wars? Like, oh, that was my, that was my thing. I, was, I was getting concerned. Track over the walls. I regret nothing. I'm like, <laughs> but in that case, actually, Carla and I seem to share that same environment growing up in predominantly white environments, which I guess is why we're related to this side of the stage. <laughs> Y'all sat down there, you know? <laughs> you segregated yourselves, baby. <laughs> but, but no, my, my experience was similar to Carlin's in that when I nerded out, when I watched TV or talked about comic books, and this was up until, actually I met you all, that I thought this was just something that white people and Asian people do. I did not think it was an acceptable thing to be a black woman and a nerd for a very long time. So I would always have these issues trying to meld the, these parts of my identity. So, yeah, I mean, that's why I love that, you know, we all of us have this sort of different sort of experience coming into nerdom, you know, and hey, more power to us and makes this panel more interesting. Yeah, you that's that's the beauty. That's the beauty of, like, that's not the evidence. <laughs> that is the beauty of, like, black women's experiences is that there's a whole spectrum 